ever tasted butterscotch or artificial butter at a commercial brewery in a beer, it shouldn't be there. Let me show you how to do a forced diacetyl test and get rid of it all. Shan. Hey, if I hear an Aussie say diacetyl, I'll headbutt the <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit rude. Hello brewers, hello YouTube. Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to do a forced diacetyl test. In Australia we pronounce it diacetyl. If you're an American you'll pronounce it diacetyl. A bit like the aluminium aluminum thing. So spare the comments. We say diacetyl. So diacetyl is a normal part of any fermentation. And what it is, you have a yeast cell. Um, as it metabolizes the sugars, it excretes alpha acetyl lactate and then that oxidizes, turns into diacetyl, and diacetyl is a flavor active molecule, and it's got high flavor impact. So what you have to do um, when your beer reaches terminal gravity, you need to perform a diacetyl rest or a VDK rest, and what that does is allows all the yeast cells to mop up their mess, basically. So the yeast will go back, metabolize the diacetyl back into the yeast cell, and then it'll convert it into 2,3-butane diol, and that has a very, very low impact on flavour. So not noticeable um, by sensory evaluation, whereas diacetyl is. Diacetyl is even noticeable uh, in parts per billion. So let alone parts per million, in parts per billion you can notice it quite heavily. So it's a massive flavour impact to your beer. The poor man's diacetyl test, which is what most breweries our size do because we can't afford the equipment. Basically what we do is we remove a sample from the tank once we've reached terminal gravity and we'll check it. What we'll do, we'll heat it up between 60 and 80 degrees for 20 minutes and then we'll chill it as fast as we can. And what we're doing there is we're introducing oxygen. So we're oxidizing the alpha acetyl lactate and we're producing diacetyl. So if there's any diacetyl left in the beer, and you send it to package, that's it. So the yeast won't mop up the diacetyl after that. You'd be surprised how many commercial breweries in Australia and across the world that um, I've had a diacetyl ridden beer. It has no place in beer. Yeah, that's my opinion. There's a couple of styles where it's accepted. Leave it for your popcorn, not your beer. So things we're gonna need is your glassware. We're gonna clean our glassware right out though with our pipe cleaners. So we're gonna clean our test tube, 250ml test tube, glassware, and we're also gonna have our little beaker too, 250ml. The reason we're cleaning out our um, glassware is because it's a sensory evaluation, so we don't want any off uh, flavors. So just another thing, um, alpha acetyl lactate is a, what's known as a VDK, and that's the precursor to diacetyl. This is what I think where the home brewers make the mistake of not doing a VDK rest or a diacetyl rest is it's terminal gravity, let's get it to fucking package, let's get it out. Unfortunately you can't, you need the yeast to re-mop up their mess, which is the formation of diacetyl, back into the yeast cell to produce 2,3-butane diol. So that's what we need to do. It's imperative you do a diacetyl rest. When it comes to a lager, because you ferment at a lower temperature, what you can do is you can ferment right through uh, active fermentation and then let that yeast just free rise up to 17 to 18 degrees for a couple of days and then you can perform a forced diacetyl test. And if you pick up a bit of diacetyl on the nose or in the taste, that's fine. All you have to do is let it go for another day and then you'll come back the next day. You might go out to 11 or 12 days of fermentation, but it's imperative that you allow the yeast to mop up that diacetyl because once you cold crash, the ladies go to bed and there's no, there's no mopping up of that diacetyl. It's very, very important you do a diacetyl rest and have the product free of diacetyl before you package or before you cold crash. It's a busy Sunday, so you might hear some background noise. Let's do this. So, you know, the drill, Sani, isopropyl. And then we're gonna take a sample. We're going to clear this sample right out because we're going to have a lot of yeast debris in it. And then we're going to take our final sample. See, so it's much clearer. We've got no yeast cake in there. Same again. So with the XPA, we reached terminal gravity, which is 10.10, two days ago. 
So that was seven days of fermentation. Two days ago we did a diacetyl test, there was a dash of diacetyl still in it, so we're out to day 11 on fermentation. This is the diacetyl test again, and what we'll do if it fails the diacetyl test, we'll just leave it for another day. So this is the official poor man's diacetyl test. What we need is five litre bucket. We're gonna split our sample. And then we're gonna add hot liquor to the sample. So this is the forced diacetyl test. We're gonna get our offside a series. Set a timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, counting down. Well done, Siri. Made an appearance. And then we're gonna whack this straight in the cool room. So we're actually introducing oxygen at the moment, so we're gonna get some DO flavors as well, but we can ignore them. All we're chasing is diacetyl. All right, so we'll wait our 20 minutes, and then we're gonna cold crush that as quickly as possible. What we're doing here is adding DO, or adding oxygen and heat. So they're they turn the precursor alpha acetyl lactate into diacetyl. So this is our forced diacetyl test. We'll get um, a picture of a forced diacetyl test up here and we'll put it in the description below so you can work out how a yeast cell produces the diacetyl and then mops it up and how you introduce the uh, forced diacetyl test to find out whether you've got diacetyl still in your product, in your beer. What we're doing here, we've got ice and a little bit of cold water because we want to chill this sample as quickly as we can. All right, we're going to cool this sample so straight into the cold water. Pack that ice around it. And we're going to throw that in the cool room, help a little bit more. All right, so we've chilled our forced diacetyl test down to roughly four degrees C. So you can pull that out and put it in a sample glass. And then we've got our control for the experiment. So you can put that in the other one. Some brewers say you should do a blind tasting and ask another brewer, but we're all grown ups here. If we smell diacetyl, we smell diacetyl. And I, we don't have another brewer, but some brewers have said it on shit that I've watched, but yeah. So that's our control. Smells like the uh, XBA. And then now this is our forced diacetyl test. So on the nose, can't smell any. Give it a swirl, get the beak right in there. I can smell a couple of other off flavours from the, just from the heating up and still having the yeast in suspension when I heated it up, but otherwise it's pretty good. Considering we were on the high end of the, like around the 80 degrees, no diacetyl there at all. Coat the tongue. No, it's fine. So that's diacetyl free. We're looking for artificial butter. So like popcorn butter, you know that smell. Uh, we're also looking for butterscotch, and that's the smell diacetyl. Diacetyl itself is a flavor active molecule, so they use it to produce popcorn. So that's the artificial taste of butter you get in, in microwave popcorn. I'm pretty sure there's PFAS in it, so stay away. <laughs> so you're gonna get the beak in there and give um, four sharp sniffs. And then we're gonna take one big one. <laughs> Nah, don't pass out. <laughs> Give it a swirl. Break up that surface tension. Nothing in there. Ready to cold crash. We're diacetyl free, we know we are. Like I said, we went an extra two days. The yeast have mopped up all the diacetyl production. So we're clear, ready to cold crash. So we'll cold crash now. And then a couple of days we'll carb it ready for package. The biggest thing is once you pass your forced diacetyl test, then you can cold crash. So don't just reach terminal gravity and then think, all right, the, the yeast is done, we can cold crash. Don't do that, never do that. I've done it. When we first started up at Scallop Street, it was actually the XPA, we packaged a heap of XPA. <laughs> it's hard to talk about. Claire's laughing behind the camera. Yeah, so we packaged it, we had terminal gravity for two days, didn't do a forced diacetyl test. Uh, we, were, we were chasing a deadline, uh, we had canners booked in, can the next day, rest is history. It was a waste of money. And I tipped a lot of XPA cans down the drain. So the most expensive thing in a brewery is to package, especially when you get an external canner and it really fucking hurts to open that can and pour it into the trade waste. 
Trust me, I've done it. Do a bit of research on diacetyl and forced diacetyl tests. A couple of references, Dr. Charlie Banforth, whack him into YouTube and he does a fair bit on diacetyl. All right, we're ready to cold crash. The whole time that you place the beer throughout the process? The whole time, like, every day. How many times do you do Every day, so every day. <laughs> I'll taste the XPA throughout, the whole way throughout fermentation. When it's worked, straight out of the kettle, when we've sent it, um, day one when we pitched, I'll probably skip day two, go to day three when we're in high Krausen, so active fermentation. Before you add any hops, you'll always test it. Terminal gravity, you'll test it. And a sensory test and a pH test to know that we've got active fermentation and we're slowly bringing our pH down. Like we start our wort, our wort will be 5.2 pH. By the time we finish, we're between four, two and four and a half. Yeah, so constantly throughout fermentation, taste your beer, taste your beer, taste your beer. That's all you should do. Yeah, so day one, you've got young beer, Viking beer, very sweet, wort, honey, flavour, tiny bit of alcohol, so they would have only metabolised not even half of, um, depends on the yeast strain, but not even half of the wort. So you'll get like a Viking beer, and then as you progress through fermentation, let's say day four, day five, six, you'll have diacetyl formation as we explained how it works. Terminal gravity, you'll have a finished beer, no, no real um, diacetyl pickup. Like you won't have that flavor as much because the yeast have started to mop it up. You need them to metabolize everything and get all the diacetyl out. Usually I'll run to 10 days on fermentation if everything's healthy, but I've had, you know, cold weather, unforeseen things that happen throughout the brew day, whatever as it's always trying to fuck you, as everyone knows, owns a brewery. The trick is though, just, just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. So diacetyl test, no, nah, it's not ready, another day. Diacetyl test, eh, it's not ready, oh, it's like nearly there. Next day, yeah, ready for package. If you continue on, like, and continue on, and you've still got high amounts of diacetyl, uh, you've probably got an infection, which is usually pediococcus, which is lactic acid bacteria, that will that is a high producer of diacetyl. So that's caused by not cleaning, and you're all you all are great brewers and know you've got to fucking clean, clean, clean. More than likely not PDO, but see out the days that you need to for the ladies to mop up the uh, diacetyl. Let us know if you've got any questions. But like I said, we'll put a diagram in the description below and make sure I got everything right. Check me. Yeah, that's how you learn. That's what we're here to do. If anyone's got any other ideas about how they do a diacetyl test, techniques, yeah, or their technique. If you're a uh, commercial brewer and we can help the home brewers out, um, let us know. So if you're a home brewer, that's it, exactly the same thing. This is the fucking ultimate poor man's diacetyl test. Like, can be done at home. Like, there's, don't get me wrong, there's heaps of breweries throughout the world that have the, uh, the equipment to do it. This is extremely effective. It doesn't cost $100,000. You don't have to have a lab. You don't have to have a all the rest of it that comes with the lab. Apparently, the research that I've done, women are more, uh, have a better ability than males to smell diacetyl. Yeah, I always get Clary's opinion. She knows exactly what it smells like because she helped me tip the fucking XP80 on the drain. <laughs> anyway, that's a whole nother story. Learnt the hard way, don't push a deadline. The beer's ready when it's ready. It's naturally occurring fermentation, so we rely on the yeast cell to mop up the diacetyl. I want to cover a couple of things about the best ways to help when, when it comes to a diacetyl rest or a VDK rest, depends what you call it, whatever, it's the same fucking thing. There's a couple of uh, things you can Google. It is, off the top of my head, Bruzyme D by White Labs, and that is a alpha acetyl decarboxylate. Um, and that is, uh, it's a dry enzyme that you'll throw in the fermenter during fermentation and that stops the VDK, which is alpha acetic lactate from forming. It'll stop the yeast producing alpha acetic lactate so it can't turn into diacetyl. So it stops the precursor. So you can Google that too. It's pretty expensive when the yeast do it for free. It's just a couple of days, couple of days, mate. You can um, let the yeast do it for you and you're not, you're not purchasing dry enzyme. If you're a massive brewery in Europe or America or in Australia, you can afford to do that. Where you can save a buck, save a buck. Yeast do it for free for you. And the other thing you can do is after active fermentation, even with a ale strain, you can let let it free rise. Set your so what I, you can have a look here. I've got FV2 up here. So we ferment the XPA at 18. 
after day four, active fermentation was over, and I just raised it up to 19.2, and we're just free rows up to 19. The glycol hasn't kicked in once, but we free rows up, and what that does, that stimulates the yeast, that extra bit of heat, and they'll get more active, and they'll start to mop up that diacetyl quicker. That's a cheaper way rather than the um, Bruzyme D. Ads, ads is in the beer garden. We better wrap this up. All right, that's it. That's how the uh, poor man's diacetyl test. It works very effectively for the price, let me tell you. Ever since I pushed a deadline, I've never had uh, diacetyl or VDK in one of our brews, which is nice to know. That's it, like and subscribe. If you've got any questions about this, hit us up. More than happy to help. Poor man's diacetyl test. Hooroo. <laughs> Don't know, they should. <laughs> If you're brewing beer, you should know what fucking diacetyl is. Come on, I'll teach you how to do it. Hey, Root. <laughs>